so sorry. <laughs> Apologize, allergies. <laughs> Kathy or Woods. Um, hi, my question is, um, there's a lot of tension in this season. We definitely see how the boys handle things differently for the girls. What is one thing that has um, surprised you in just um, how the interpretations have been different? Um, and Sarah, we can start with you. I think um, one thing that really lends uh, the greatest deal of tension among the boys is a, an event that that very deeply divides them. Um, and um, I think really honing the characters' reactions in specific ways. Um, there's been you know surprising turns of allegiances um, in the wake of that contentious event. Um, and I think. Um, really that speaks to how complicated the the terms are around it and how how many different viewpoints um I'm speaking in vagaries <laughs> because I'm trying not to speak to the event itself but I think um <laughs> that that contention I, I think the women have had such a beautiful journey um despite a lot of the problems and and on the boys island this event kind of just soaks up all of the the energy for them and there's, there's a beautiful community that they could have made as well, except it kind of didn't get to come to the fore because of what happened. Amy? What about you, Amy? What do you think? Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. I think you're on mute. Um, yeah, I mean, I think what's so interesting about what we're playing with, um, Sarah obviously spoke to the tension that's created on the boys' island. Um, from a specific event. I think season two, I, I'm so intrigued by what we're playing with in, on the woman, on the girls' island, because I, we keep talking about it as sort of um, their emotional survival is at stake, whereas the boys are sort of, at least at the beginning, where the girls were last season, which is how do we find food, shelter, water? Um, and what I'm I really love about the show and what Sarah built is that these islands really are metaphors for coming of age. And sometimes when all your needs are met, things don't necessarily go better. Sometimes you crack under the emotional, psychological weight of the things you're going through. And I was very intrigued by that um, as the other part of the journey that we're on. The, the boys, this fractious sort of breaking apart and then the girls kind of imploding. Um, as the things from their past um, and the things they're being asked to do in their present really come to haunt them. Jamie? Hi, Jamie Ruby, Sci-Fi Vision. Thanks for talking to us today. Um, so can you talk a bit about why you feel it was important to add kind of the boys' perspective and why you chose season two to do it? Um, Amy, then Sarah. Um, well, we really tried to tell the story um, authentically and honestly. And I think Gretchen uh, very wisely realized a control group has to happen. Because if all she shows is uh, a group of women doing a good job, they could argue men would have done the same. Mm -hmm. um, so I think once we just sort of started chasing what Gretchen's next, like what, what would she actually be doing? It was very clear to us that the boys island had to come um, and we were excited about those stories because we sort of have been telling these female coming of age stories and now we're getting to see the boys I think as a count like they're only like to us they're the counterpoint mm -hmm. to these girls stories which for us was a very fresh way of telling coming of age stories for boys and for girls. Okay Sarah yeah um, no, Amy spoke to a, a lot of what we talk about and how I feel, which is, you know, we're following Gretchen's story um, and uh, really what she needed to execute this experiment. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, as I was writing season one, I <laughs> did develop some emotional reactions and some like memory wellsprings um, about the, the, the men in my coming of age experience. and. Um, you know, when we weighed this, I was excited to develop the boys in relation to, like so often it's boys are, the male experience is de facto default. 
the women's experience is some kind of corollary counterpoint, um, but we've flipped it here. Right. Um, and I, I, I sense among the fandom that there's, that there's pushback and, and I, I hear that so deeply and I would be too. It's sort of like, who's, who's invading my show? Um, but uh, I, I, I hope that when they see, you know, that the women have been the forerunners and this is an, another lens on the coming of age experience, um, you know, I think it's, it's, it should be a compelling watch and we, you know, we dearly hope it will be. Okay, great. Thank you, both of you. I love the show. Thanks. Gig? Gig Pata with LRM Online. Ladies, hey, congratulations on a wonderful uh, second season. You, you both introduced new characters, keeping the old characters, which is amazing is because that's a lot of characters um, for, for a season. I want to know is how do you balance um, all of that, especially with the timing? And is there a particular character you wish you expanded more? That's a good question. Well, just from a very practical standpoint, we did start these very complicated map timelines of how many days the girls had been on the island and how many days the boys had been on the island. Um, so we had like a lot of math to do and sort of like setting and plotting in a very specific way for that. Um, and then the terror for me was um, Sarah had done such a beautiful job of fleshing out these amazing women on the island. And then that cast brought them to life in such a beautiful way. Casting, once we figured, once we knew we had characters we were excited about, we built these characters and we knew how to drive their story. You know, the casting was very scary for me because I thought, well, if we don't find men who deliver the way that those women did, um, it's going to be disappointing. And um, really a shout out to our casting director, Deanna, who um, just so beautifully uh, like helped us on the journey to finding these actors. Um, and then for me personally, you know, we didn't do a backstory for Josh in the second season. Um, for a couple of reasons, some of which uh, I feels a little spoilery, but um, he, I think his greatest trauma is actually on the island, not in his backstory, um, which was an intentional choice. But I, and I think we explored his um, emotional journey on the island in a beautiful way, but I'm, I'm curious to see his life at home. I personally am very excited to get a little bit more into Henry's world. Um, uh, he, we had a, a whole, um, girlfriend character for him who is just as much of sort of a proud eccentric um and uh so <laughs> i'm hoping to revisit that at some point <laughs> terrific excellent thank you very much megan uh, megan patious with beautiful ballad for both of you how far into the first season did you guys realize that you wanted to introduce the boys in the second season what was the timeline on that, Amy? That is a good, like, I think we were probably at around episode four or five when we started to talk about, you know, I, I'm such a scaredy cat, superstitious person. I always, I'm too afraid to think season two while I'm working on season one. Um, and to Amazon's credit. Um, they were like, we love the show. We really want to encourage you to think about past this one season. And obviously Sarah had arced out a general idea of what she thought could happen. But we really started drilling down, I think about halfway through the season on the control group would show up in uh, at the end of the season as a pretty shocking cliffhanger. And that the show could handle the weight of actually bringing them into the fold in season two, as opposed to sort of an afterthought down the road. Um, so yeah, I think it was about halfway through. Is that, does that sound right to you, Sarah? Yeah, I think it was the end of the mini room and we were going into the bigger room. Yeah. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Perfect, thank you. Yeah. Kathia? You talked about the, the differences of boys and girls, and we know that um, just the maturity level. And one thing I find very interesting that you have, you threw people together that are in very different cliques that are being forced to, to, to work together or coexist. 
was that done purposefully or um, just, you know, just for a creative reasons? Because we know that teenagers, one thing that they don't like is being forced or to be outside of their comfort zone necessarily. And we can start with you, Amy. Um, well, I think what Sarah did in the pilot is brilliant, which is, I think Gretchen was protecting herself from criticism. Uh, like I'm putting, I'm not putting together eight like-minded people who will coalesce immediately. She was thinking what I think Sarah did so beautifully is different parts of the country, different socioeconomics, different, very diverse um, in every way. Um, so that I think that was a very smart, just from a storytelling perspective uh, that Sarah put that together because then it allowed us to explore so many different coming of age stories, but it's also what Gretchen, it's the truth. That's what Gretchen would have done. She would have said, disparate people all having to come together, look how community either built or, or exploded. Um, so I think, Sarah, you can speak much more to this. I think it was quite intentional and Sarah's part. <laughs> well, I, I, you know, it has been a minute since I've been in high school, um, but there was like a, not a ton of migration between cliques. Um, and, you know, you get put in this artificially constructed environment with people that you do not rub elbows with at school. Um, and it actually gives an opportunity to see how some of those star crossed relationships socially can actually become the most beautiful relationships. I think two of my favorite, you know, relationships on the islands are uh, Fatten and Leah. Um, and then on the boys' island, um, Kieran and Ivan, which is a very, very contentious relationship. And those, those people just like, they do not run together. <laughs> they do not run in the same social environment um, at school. But here they have no choice but to um, encounter each other and actually work things out and find um, common ground. Maybe, maybe not in the case of Kieran and Ivan. Jamie? Was there any added pressure coming into season two knowing that you already have such a big built-in fan base? Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I felt it enormously, I mean, uh, character creation is, um, it's one of our <laughs> most challenging arts um, in this medium. Um, and I spent, I got to spend, you know, years <laughs> developing those young women. And here we were on a bit of a time crunch, but you have to, you know, invest that same love. Um, you have to draw from your own life, draws from the lives of like the male writers, like the, the queer writers that we brought on. We, we knew that the onus was, was on us to make them like come alive and have the depth um, that the women had. Otherwise it would have would have felt um, really thin and upsetting, I think. Um, so that was, there was a lot of pressure there. Yeah, yeah. and I think, I think the good news when you're a new show is you're terrified because you don't know if anyone's going to come. <laughs> and then if they don't, you can, oh, well, the marketing or, you know, you can blame lots of other things. <laughs> um, but when you're coming uh, into a second season of a show where you have fans, you really, the pressure, I, look, I feel it every season. It's not once, like every time I feel like I better deliver, it matters even more than it did last year. Um, so yeah, but I felt a tremendous amount um, knowing how much our fans really connected to the stories we told um, certainly adding in eight new characters that we're asking them to invest in. I felt like we have a very big job in front of us and we just, and we never, we just never stopped loving, laboring. Um, I never stopped being nervous and worrying about it. And I don't think Sarah does either. Um, no. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're pretty uh, intense about our, uh, you know, desire to um, deliver. Um, I think there, there's trepidation among the fan base about, you know, what the, the these men coming in and um, uh, there's, um, I think there's some screen time that we took to build those male characters just so that they would be fleshed out and so that everyone could really sink their teeth into. Um, but I hope that the audience, you know, realizes as the episodes continue that we are very much even-handedly caring for and um, loving the stories um, 
on the women's island as well. All right. Okay. Thank you, both of you. Okay. Jake Pada with LRM Online. Amy, Sarah, the the best thing I like about this uh, show is the character manipulation. Um, character studies, of course, but I want to know uh, which either of you are closest to the character of Gretchen and, <laughs> and um, on, on, you know, manipulating and doing all these character studies and how long does that actually take and was it easy to get out of that uh, Gretchen's mind? Well, one thing I want to say up front is that Gretchen has a very binary perspective on the world, um, which is toxic. Um, it's off base. Um, it's not reality. Um, so fortunately, that is one thing that we do not share. Um, we've had to sort of live in that uh, as we're following her experiment. Um, you know, but should we get a third season, it's going to be, um, you know, on us to show how that binary perspective is, you know, not serving her. Um, and is going to, you know, hobble what she wants to do, this change she wants to make. Um, but from, uh, I don't know, from purely just like a, certainly, I mean, I get a little, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's hard not to be when you're a writer. I mean, you're like playing with, you know, figurines on the board. Um, so you do feel a little bit puppet mastery, um, uh, but I'm not really a, like a narcissist like she is. Um, I kind of wish I were a little, I don't know, more of a narcissist. She's so, like she's so spicy. She's so spicy. And I'm not, I'm bland. <laughs> you are not. I mean, look, when you hire 16 people, they're willingly going to the island of Australia, but there is a certainly a parallel there when you're <laughs> taking 16 people to an island to, you know, be together for seven months. Um, that certainly does feel a little Gretchen-esque on our part. Um, I think the big difference for us is like, uh, Rachel often says it about Gretchen, and I think it's so, so true. Like, Gretchen cares about humanity, but doesn't care about humans. And I think as writers, like our entire job is to get into the actual minutia of human experience, not of humanity itself. Um, so I think that's sort of where our big difference is. Hopeful. Well, there's a few other ones, but um, I think that for us is, you know, the, the big difference is how I think we, what we have to do to do our jobs versus what she has to do to do her job. Well, I'm glad you're not Gretchen at the end of the day. Thank you. <laughs> Megan, and this will be the final question of the roundtable. Is there a character that uh, for both of you that you really relate to that when you're writing or telling the story of this character that you're, you're reminded of your own high school days, your own click days? Um, well, certainly for me, it's always been Leah, um, sort of, she's why I um, decided to launch the series with her, right? What you know, and I know over cerebral, um, like big hearted, fall too hard young women. Uh, so I started there <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, um, that racing mind, um, you know, I'll write dialogue for Leah and like, the, the speeches will be like this long because she can't like quite make a point always. <laughs> um, she's a circuitous thinker um, and uh, I'm, I'm a bit as well. Um, so she's sort of where I live. <laughs> um, I think for me, I obviously as a writer, Leah has that sort of energy of overthinking things, but finding her way to sort of meaning and purpose. Um, I'm definitely a bit of a fatten in the sense that I kind of say it like it is. And if it pisses someone off, they'll hopefully get over it and still know I mean well by it. Um, and then, you know, as a producer, I think I'm pretty sturdy like Dot. At the end of the day, I'm like, okay, I have all of these other feelings, but I have to kind of hold it up for everybody else. So I'm a bit of a, a combo. And I think, you know, for me, when I look at all of these characters, and Sarah and I both say this, like, there's a little piece of like, there's a little bit of Ivan in me. Um, you know, I, 
we, I think each of like each of these characters, we feel something that like sparks for our personal like souls. Um, and so it makes it really fun to to write these characters. Thank you. Thank you all so much. Thanks. Have a good Thank afternoon. Thank you so much. You. This was fun. I was scared. I was like, oh, how's this going to work? But it was awesome. <laughs> Thank Thank you. Bye. Thanks.